All right, right now, hopefully you can see this. We're going to nip these five spikes off. Put a little radius on the top and bottom. Smooth it out to the black line. That way we got a just like a straight bumper spike instead of a dog to catch. So that's what we're going to do now. You don't have to cut all the way through, just get a good score and then just break right off. Hear that? Now we can take a flap wheel, smooth her up. There she is. Go ahead and put this on. There she is. Touching the wood, you're just going to be off of the case. So, should be okay. We have went ahead and <clears throat> we got a 460 carb swapped over. Had to drill our impulse. That's not the impulse, but change this choke rod out. Change this top cover, put the 361 compensator on the 460 carb. Took the 460 pump cover off with your impulse nipple and just stuck it on the other spare carb. And we went ahead and drilled our new impulse hole. This one was already marked out. Just needed to drill it. And not going to go into a ton of details. But there is a little bit of modifications made inside. 
grinded up a few things, took a couple unnecessary chunks out of there that didn't need to be there. Now all we need to do is grind our screw heads down on this. And she should have good flow. This is just going to run gas for now. As y'all know, we got a flywheel done. That thing is light, man. Crazy light compared to what it was. I wish I would have weighed it. Alright, so now what we're going to do... Pretty much everything marked out right there with that paint pen is going to get cut off. What my plans are is to get just a hacksaw, set it here, just cut back as far as we can till we hit here, and then we're going to just cut down, take this bottom section out, then we're just going to take our Dremel and get up in here and open this V up. That way this whole back section is wide open. That's what we got there. We'll clean it up, take what's in this V out, smooth all this up, make sure it ain't jagged, bevel these corners, that way air flows nice and smooth around it, not worried about the top, just the sides and the bottom. Also, this piece Instead of leaving it flat, I'm just going to slightly bevel this outside edge. That way the air kind of just flows in nice instead of around that sharp corner. When you get into stuff like this, all the little, all the little details are what's going to keep bumping your power up. Doing your muffler mods, porting, and stuff like that. That's going to give you your, your biggest power bump. And then after that, you're chasing all those little, little pieces of horsepower that you can pick up here and there. A lot of saws, it's not really worth it to do it, especially work saws. Because it takes a lot of time to get in there and finesse all this little stuff. But on a decent race saw, you're trying to make all the power you can. Every little bit is going to help you. Here's the back of the horn now. Took those little ears down. Just made it into a little mouth kind of. Beveled all the edges, sanded them, made sure everything was pretty smooth. That's what she looks like inside. <clears throat> this piece, we beveled this outside edge, as you can see. It's kind of like a mini velocity stack in a way, is the way I could explain it. And that's it. But you have your carb. This piece. And look how much more open that is. Whoop whoop. Ford had to go through just the top. And it pulled a little through the bottom. But now she's pretty much wide open and then you filter it's 
sets there. I can't push it all together right now because holding too much stuff. But anyway, your filter covers all of it up. Perfect for a race saw. And then your car setting back here on the back side. Oh yeah. Hope you guys like it. This was a little bit outside of normal on building a saw. Normally you wouldn't go through all this little tedious stuff, but it's going to be worth it. So for right now, guys, you have a great day. Hope you're having a great week. Come back and see us next time. Dubs, we out.